I was the only one like interested in Chinese and like I remember last time like people's perspective towards like Chinese is not very good like if I show that I'm like I can speak Chinese mm. and they will be like oh you're very China which means like China person so they meant it as like an insult I mean just cool lah you can speak more than one language yeah, right? yeah it's a cool factor so. Right? Yeah. so I mean yeah. like when I'm amongst my friends from overseas I'm like yapping in Tamil and then they're just like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. like, it's your superpower yeah it's your superpower okay? yeah okay. In Singapore, where English dominates as the working language, how do we keep our connection with our mother tongues? Welcome back to The Usual Place, and I'm your host, Natasha, and today I want to talk about the challenges and joys of being bilingual. If this is your first time watching or listening to The Usual Place, do like and subscribe to the show so that you can get notified when we drop new content. Now, my three guests on this show are supposed to be bilingual pros because they have no choice. Their job <laughs> depends on it, right, guys? Yeah. I guess. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Let me introduce them. I have Seeing, who's a content producer with a Chinese social media brand Hey Kaki. And then next to her on the couch, I have Aish, who does branding and promotions Welcome. at Tamil Murasu. And I also have Rabiatul, the deputy audience and growth editor from Barita Haryan. Thank you for being on the show. So the topic of bilingualism actually came up. Uh, during the National Day Rally. So mm-hmm. Singapore's new Prime Minister, Lawrence Wong, said in his Mandarin speech that he understands that the Chinese community here, I'm looking at you, Chinese community <laughs> is very concerned about the standard of Mandarin here. So I wanted to ask you, as people who work in places where your mother tongue is actually the dominant language in mm. your workplace, what were your experiences like learning your mother tongue? Yeah, so maybe mm. say so you can <laughs> kick us off. Did you oh, like learning yeah. Chinese when you were growing up? Oh, I really enjoyed learning Chinese when I grew up. Mm. Mainly because like, I spoke Chinese at home, so it came quite naturally to me. Mm. And since I was young, I enjoyed reading Chinese books. Like, I remember I would go to the library and borrow like 24 books all at once. Wow, yeah. I think you're an anomaly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> was, was, was this like, yeah. uh, were your other friends also like interested? No, in... I was the only one like interested in Chinese. Oh. And like, I remember last time, like people's perspective towards like Chinese is not very good. Like if I show that I'm like, I can speak Chinese mm. and they'll be like, oh, you are very China, which means like China person. So they meant it as like an insult. Okay. Yeah, and but how I, did you feel about that? I felt very outcasted. Mm. So when I was young, uh, I really wanted to be accepted by my friends. So I don't really dare to like be good in Chinese in a way. Yeah, but I see the perspective changing as I grow up. So mm. more and more people like um are more open to Chinese. And like now, if let's say I'm good in Chinese, they'll be like, wow, you're so good in Chinese. They'll be like impressed. So it's that's a change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, we'll get back to that about the perception yeah. of speaking your mother tongue and where you saw that switch. But between uh Rab and um Aish, what mm. was your what were your experiences like learning Tamil and Malay? Well actually mine's very different from hers because I only started speaking and writing um after seven years old. So even though I grew up, like my parents spoke Tamil, but I could not pick it up quickly. So and my you mom were speaking was, English? I was speaking English. Okay. And then um, when I started primary school, it was really difficult for me in Tamil class because I had no idea. Like I knew the basic letters, but I did not, was not able to form sentences and everything. So I only started properly learning from seven and up. Yeah. yeah. What was that like? It was stressful, man. Like I, was, well, I would cry before class. And then my Tamil teacher was... <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Just not friendly. Oh. So um, it was yeah stressful and traumatic. So actually, very ironic that I'm working for Tamil Morrison now. Like I would never okay. have thought, <laughs> never you have grow like, up like using Tamil ever. Have, like I would use Tamil as like my job, and I would be working for a Tamil paper. Never I was like. No. Wait, so when you went to class, mm-hmm. you didn't know, when well, first day of school, you didn't know any... I knew letters, knew, I, I okay. understood. So like, I know like fruits and colours and all that. Just I didn't, I couldn't recognise that, oh, this is what... Like for example, um, apple, right? I know what it is in Tamil, which is apple. Yeah, but I didn't <laughs> know what, how to like spell it out, you know? Yeah, okay. So. Alright, okay, yeah. okay. Okay, mm-hmm. Robert, do you have the same hmm. experience? Okay, so basically, right, I have no choice but to be good in Malay. Because my dad was a Malay teacher. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, like, we still... High. Yeah, we still speak a lot of English. Mm. Uh, I think also at that point of time, you know, um, my parents probably brought us up thinking that, you know, we better be good in English because that's the working language and all that. But also, he's quite um, strict when it comes to the standard. So, I think I had a better start. So, I start from young. And um, he used to teach me and my mom used to teach me. So, when I go to school, I think I... Um, I'm one of the better students mm. so I think that actually motivated me you know like when you're good at something right you know it's like oh effortlessly I can do well in Malay so to me that's um, how I learn Malay so I'm good I feel like I have to continue to be good 
you know, because that's the expectation of me and I, I just learned it that way. Yeah. Okay. So I wanted to touch on something that Seeing said, right? It's like um, the her perception back then. So how long ago was this? Was like this like 15, 20 years mm, ago? Really? Yeah, around okay. there. And have, has this switched? Like, do you see more people picking up Chinese now and loving it first? And mm. same with uh, Tamil and Malay. Do you see a switch in the way people appreciate their mother tongues? Like, Mm. I think definitely more people are interested in learning Chinese, but I wouldn't say that they love it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think um, like a lot of people mainly they want to learn Chinese for like functional benefits. Mm. Let's say for work wise, mm. uh, being bilingual is like a very big plus point. Mm. And let's say if they want to use Taobao, then they have to read in Chinese, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's a very yeah. useful skill. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. but I think in, th- in the sense of like cultural or like identity, mm. uh, I think more people do want to stay in touch with Chinese uh, mm. so as to get closer to their roots. Yeah. Do, do you all feel mm. like learning your mother tongue actually brings you closer to your culture? I think definitely. Um, okay, so I, I have two kids, right? Mm. And when my kids go to school in preschool, I think a lot of the preschool offers Chinese and so they end up doing um, Chinese. Mm. And, um, you know, the for my son, who is uh, eight years old, so the Chinese teacher did say, you know, actually he, he has a flair for the language, why don't you carry on? So actually it was like a debate between me and my husband because my husband's Indian, takes Tamil, and then I'm Malay and takes Malay. And then this poor child is learning Chinese, you know, and then when you ask him, like, what's your race? And then he's like, oh, uh, I'm Singaporean at one time. <laughs> or then suddenly he's like, oh, I'm Chinese just because I can speak Chinese. I'm like, no, you're not Chinese. Like, you know, yeah. so I mean, so that that's why we like, you know, we debated amongst ourselves and then which which subject should this child actually take? Mm. So, but um, for us, I think that we settled on taking Malay uh, because I feel that uh, it will help. Like the way I believe that like when teachers teach in in the, the classroom, especially in primary school and mm. all that, and that CCE and all that, it comes hand in hand with the mother tongue language. So I feel that the values that is inculcated in those lessons is not just language lessons. And then that is why we actually make a choice. I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's Tamil or Malay, but we wanted it to be more Malay because um, we are also Muslim. Yeah. And somehow, you know, when you are a Malay and Muslim, I mean, I can't say all Malays are Muslim, but majority are, and th- that's how it is in Singapore. So I felt that, like, okay, that's a better fit. I wanted him to have, like, a sense of identity, mm. you know, to feel belong at least, not just like, oh, I'm just Singaporean, you know. Because do you think that if he didn't speak Malay, that kind of would alienate him from family? Yes. Because he, they can only communicate. So th- he would he not be able to speak with your parents, to your parents in Malay? Yeah, yeah so that's but a funny thing, English, right? right? Yeah. yeah, so like my, my, my parents, right, like my dad, that strict Malay teacher that he is right and then like he speaks Malay to my kids and my kids totally ignore because it doesn't register they take Mandarin doesn't register in their brains and then he switched to English and I'm like hey you're supposed to teach them Malay <laughs> like, what's up he's the inbuilt tuition teacher yes. right? he's like yeah so he switches to English I'm like hmm, okay this cannot be yeah because mm. I find that you know then they are just unaware so like you know in co- family conversations and I don't say that we speak perfect Malay all the time mm. but like you know we use Malay terms Malay words Malay idioms and all that and the kids are just like oh Okay, la di da. I don't understand. You know, like they totally tune out, and I felt that. I feel yeah, how that do you feel about it? Like you know that they don't connect, yeah, as naturally as you maybe. Yeah, so I felt that like it's not something that I want my kid to feel. Mm. Right, like they are alienated from family, and then like you know, of course I have like relatives going, eh, don't know how to speak Malay, you know that kind, like expecting this poor child to speak Malay without knowing that um well he didn't really have that. The- he that start um, background learning. and yeah. all that yeah. yeah so I thought like you know I think it's really important it's essential for him to communicate to have that sense of identity and I think mm. like really as I say like um, being Malay is closely tied to um, the religion the community and mm. all that and I, I and that was the reason why mm. I, I made I made him teach mm. uh, uh, take Le- Malay. Malay so yeah. like when I told him like in primary one you're gonna take Malay he's like huh why are you asking me to take foreign language I'm like what foreign <laughs> language is your mother tongue language <laughs> mother tongue you know it's not a foreign language so he was quite unhappy but I think he's quite yeah, okay how old is he now like is he, has he warmed up to it does he he's in primary three um, still struggle because it's really very difficult to speak Malay at home because when I speak Malay the youngest one doesn't understand neither does my f- husband oh, right so 
So we, 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 we tend to speak English in general. But I think that like, I kind of forced him to watch uh, Malay cartoons, much to his oh, dislike. Are there Malay cartoons? Malay yes, cartoons? they okay. are. Maybe Bobo Boy on and oh, God knows what. Ipin, oh, sorry. oh yes, yeah. oh. that annoying cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> I will not judge cartoons. <laughs> He's learning. He's learning. <laughs> yes, and I even make them listen to the radio channel in Malay whenever I drive them to school or oh. whatnot. So I have my colleagues teasing me. It's like, huh, you're listening to Malay songs. And I'm like, yeah, for my hey, child's the Malay songs education. Are really nice. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So that's how I do it. Like. Okay. It's I, I feel your struggle. <laughs> like, okay. Aish is learning Tamil cool now. I, mean, I don't know. What's your take? I Okay. So I do not know how exactly Tamil is taught now. Mm. But um, on the point of like, whether or not the language seeps into the culture. I feel, okay, so I have many friends who are scattered around the globe, right? And some of them um, cannot speak Tamil at all. They only know like a few buzzwords or they can understand it. They listen to the music, but they can't really speak it fluently. Mm. I, I feel it makes them cling ever more so to the culture. Mm. So their weddings, their food, their celebrations, even though they can't speak it as well, mm. they still celebrate um, even Pongal in Canada. Mm. Um, they wake up early just to make pongal and then like, you know they dress up and everything because they're like I, I have to do this at least yeah. I can't even speak it I'm not gonna let it die so yeah, yeah. I, I feel, feel like that makes, yeah. I feel that because yeah, I yeah. can't speak my mother tongue my mother tongue is not Tamil and I learned Malay in school and I can't speak my own mother tongue which is like Malayalam, Malayalam. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so, I, so this is actually true I actually you know cling to the food the clothes like wearing yeah. saris when I can yeah. but it's sad right it's sad, it's yeah. sad. but I mean I, I'm happy that they still you know they're very passionate about it, even more than me sometimes. Okay, so why do you think the language is more important? I don't know if it's more important, but would you say w if they can't learn it, what is the downside to it? I mean, okay, so Tamil is such a rich language. There's a lot of history. There's a mm. lot of mm. poetry, beauty. Um, there's a lot of wisdom seeped into mm. the language. Mm. Like a lot of, uh, what is that? Um, we have this thing called like Tirukural, which is like... Okay, so we, are, we all learn it in, in secondary school and primary school. And it's basically like um, life lessons that are taught to you at a very young age. Yeah, it's like, pro like um, what's that word? Oh, what's the word for it? Not, not like prophecies. Like civics and morals, is it? Not civics and morals. It's like little bits of, my God, what's the word for hey, it? Like can story you, forms? Can, no, wait, I need help. What's the word for it? What's the word for it? You can't Do you look at a piece of paper? Yeah. yeah. Uh, proverbs, yes, yes, proverbs, that's what proverbs. Yeah. yeah so okay. is this not like Brebasa? It is not proverbs. Okay, right? proverbs yeah. Yeah. Idioms, yeah, proverbs. Yeah, yeah. But these yeah. proverbs are super philosophical. Okay. And like it keeps you like thinking, gets you thinking at a really young age, right? And then some proverbs like your Tamil teacher will be like, okay, uh, this is the proverb of the week, seep it into your compo. Then we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> so we have to start formulating, like, you know. So this is stuff you miss out on like, if you don't speak right, the language right, because right. it really gets you form like and then you will have your your mom or your grandma or your aunt like throwing random like you know um idioms and stuff at you at home. So if you don't understand, you kind of miss out on the whole culture of the like, shared experience of growing up. Can I just say that? Scolding in, in your mother tongue is way better than scolding. Yes, I know, right? Absolutely. <laughs> I <laughs> agree. Yeah. You suddenly switch to Malay whenever I want to scold. It just feels so satisfying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and all the words, especially in Chinese. It punches I mean, you yeah. yeah. Malay was scolding yeah. also. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm scared now. But yeah, yeah, I, I hear you, I hear you. And, but I want to ask you as, as in the workplace, right? Because you, mm. you guys deal with um, getting a younger audience to learn their mother tongue or enjoy it from the content that you're produced. Mm. I, I want to ask, what are some of the challenges you see in the community when it comes to learning your mother tongue? Like, do you have to adapt to the current status, the current situation where you have to mix English in? Or like, what's it like, basically, getting younger people to learn their mother tongue? Yeah. Mm. I think firstly because like we are English is our working language mm. so we are in a mainly English environment so it's very hard to stay connected to their mother tongue mm. I mean I think the best way to learn a language is to be in the environment where people speak it mostly mm. Mm. so I feel like the environment is the is the hardest and secondly like the barrier to entry is quite high also I mean Chinese is a difficult language to learn there's like mm. characters there's pronunciation there's intonation it's very hard, hard to learn hard. yeah <laughs> so uh, a lot of people think that it's hard to learn Chinese and yeah. they even though they might have interest in learning, they don't mm. know where to start. Mm. Yeah, so uh, so how Heikaki does it is that um, we hope to bring youths closer to Chinese by uh, providing a more like accessible avenue for them to con consume Chinese content. Mm. So we try to uh, mix in some Singlish or English to make mm. Chinese not so intimidating. And also we add English subtitles so that even oh. though they don't, may maybe they might mm. not understand, but they can read and understand and yeah. they can also hear, hear it more often. Yeah. yeah. 
And, and and does Berita Haran and Helmers who actually do this as yeah, well? So, or I you mean, have another strategy? To yeah, so we're currently working on young audience strategy. Like we're going to have our own young audience theme and brand and content, right? So that's also our idea is like make it 70% or at least 80% Tamil, 20% English. So it's not so intimidating to those who don't speak. Like cu- currently our, we are very, very like pure Tamil right now. Mm. So I don't know if I can say it. But <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> yeah, so we have to dilute mm. it a little bit to make it more accessible. If not, it's not going to... It will die out if we don't do that, you know, because the current youth, um, especially like Singaporean youth, they don't use Tamil as much in their day-to-day, except mm. for like maybe speaking with friends or like colloquial. Like, we did a lot of ground surveys, youth forums and all that. They're just not using it, man. So mm. it's really sad. If we don't if we do not do something, then it might just die off. Mm. Yeah. Is yeah. that the concern in the BH newsroom? Yeah, definitely. So yeah. we have this uh, young audience product called OMG or Orang Muda Gitu. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this Gitu, is a bit of slang, you know. Yeah. Yes, must have slang. Okay, but anyway, what does that mean? Uh, orang muda gitu means young people like that. Oh. Yeah, oh, so it's targeted okay. for like twenty one years old to thirty four years old. So, so similarly, like hey kaki, we use um a mix. You know, something more natural for the youth to you know speak in. It, and mm. I think that in daily normal conversations, people don't actually speak proper English as well. You know, there's a lot of like Singlish, Singlish yeah, in, and then you know, yeah. like what we say, we want to score or we want to use a more punchy word. We probably use it in our mother tongue or other people's mother tongue right so so we we do that we keep it to about 70 percent mm. malay 30 percent english which is sometimes quite a struggle because the people doing it are also very young people yeah but apart from that um of course we get a lot of pushback especially from those linguists from yeah, those people like teachers yeah, like the purists, yeah. like no, yes. because it's not supposed to be mixed that way right Correct. and also when we went to school we weren't thought yeah. This way, we weren't yes. thought with a 70, 30%. Yeah. So what, what kind of pushback do you guys get? Yeah, we get we get all kind of like people saying, oh, you know, like, can't you even like use simple Malay words? Why are you using, you know, English fly, English fight words, you know, right. for, in, for instance. But I mean, I, we can't please everyone. Mm. Uh, we do like Hey Kaki provide uh, two subtitles. So we have the Malay one, mm. the perfect, like the grammatically proper, correct. Oh, okay, yes. Okay. And then we have the grammatically correct English subtitles below. Yeah. And then like in our content, we also tend to do a bit more Malay-centric content. So we have like our Paribasa content, which is like the idioms and all that. Um, just to get people to know more about, you know, the the idioms. Mm. Then we have spelling. Recently, we had like some spelling tests on how to spell certain Malay words, that kind of thing. So we, we have a little bit more Malay-centric mm. as well, hoping that you'll balance up a little but yeah so the struggle is always there mm. of course we get the purists pushing us back and then if we get too Malay and then the young people are like eh you know yeah. like this is back to Brita Harian so yeah. Oh, oh. yeah we get a lot of negative comments about the mix of languages what do some people say they will say like why mix Chinese and English just do it in English lah since most, most of your guests are better in English yeah Oh, okay, because you have guests who mm. use who mix it as well yes. and then they... Oh, I, sorry, you have guests who are non-Chinese mm-hmm. speaking. Is that what it is? Uh, no, so uh, our guests are not as fluent in Chinese uh, as okay, what okay. people like. So yeah. they tend to mix a lot of English words mm. in and they get a lot of hate online for that. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay, so don't read the comments. Mm. Like. I, I feel like every episode <laughs> I say don't read the comments, don't read the comments. <laughs> but <laughs> clearly we should not read the comments. But yeah, mm. I joke. Um, say- yeah, for Tamil, so we have a podcast called Inner Day, Inner Slave. She's another day, another slave. We only had about like four or five episodes. But the very first episode we did was on travel and then there was a lot of um, like, why are you speaking so much in English? Um, you guys are from Tamil Marissa. So it, we're just starting out right so I guess it's something that we're going to have to deal with law. Mm. Yeah. okay mm. so um, why do you think that this is an avenue in towards getting people to speak their mother tongue doing it this way versus like say just going hardcore like I think that language learning should be fun. You know, like when you're forced to do, like people always say, oh, government should do this, government should do that. But when it's enforced, right, then it takes out the joy of learning. Mm. Yeah, you know, and I think it's harder to get people to want to learn it. But if you're learning for fun, like, you know, I'm doing a lot of Duolingo these days just because I decided I want to learn more languages. I tried Chinese, I tried French and all kinds of things. And I feel that, okay, it's fun. You know, there's no exams to it and mm. whatnot. Then why not? Yeah, so I think that's the essence of our content. You know, make it accessible, make it fun and then like, you know, make people believe that, hey, actually Malay is not like that 
difficult that formal language that you have to always speak in like as if you're taking the oral examinations in school mm. yeah so fun i think is key yeah mm. um i think if we because there's so many avenues for content out there even tamil content if we don't try it this way then we will just end up losing audience because mm. for us to produce content and if it's in fully pure tamil they would rather consume it in english mm. you know like why would they want to come and listen to tamil content unless it's something unique about it something mm. that's a shared experience so that's what we're trying to do we're trying to figure out like you know tamil food or tamil culture mm. or tamil like, even even our outfits right that is something that we can unite on like it's, it's a shared experience mm. so that's our niche like we're trying to figure mm. out what we can do with that space yeah mm. yeah yeah i mean how do you feel about about people who say oh i don't want to learn my mother tongue like it's fine i can survive with english like how do you f- oh i can s- I-, i don't need to learn chinese because i actually don't have- learn la don't learn you mean you shut yeah i mean it kind of shocks me because i i i have met people who say oh i'm i'm not very good in my mother tongue because you go through like years and years of school right and then you kind of lose it Mm. And then they are okay with not learning. It. I mean, like, how do you feel about it? Because it's your know, every language is so rich, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, how will you feel if your kids grew up and like never used Malay hmm. or can't <laughs> wow. ever speak Malay, and they're Malay? Well, at least they tried <laughs> in okay. school, yeah. I guess. But I mean, like, I mean, you know, sometimes I mean, growing up, I've also seen people who purposely don't want to speak Malay because mm. then if I speak Malay I'm associated with my race and all the other you know prejudices yeah, that, uh, against like my race I like. mm. and I think it's just strange because like if you don't feel like you belong in your own community then where exactly do you think you belong in yeah mm. so that's always my question yeah but I think that As long as you try, right? And I think it's such a waste, right? Like you said, you've learned it for years and years and then you go like, oh, I don't know how to speak Malay. I think mm. that's a bit pretentious and mm. strange. That, you know, I, I mean, what's wrong in knowing more languages than just one, mm. yeah. right? It allows yeah. you greater accessibility. You go to Malaysia, you go to Indonesia, yeah. you can speak. And then, you know, as Singaporeans, I'm sure we've picked up quite a, a fair amount of Chinese language and mm. it, it serves us when we go to China, for instance. So why not? Yeah, yeah. I I remember very pointedly telling my cikgu, I will never need Malay after this. So mm. I kind of offended her. <laughs> I mean, because it's not it's not my mother tongue. So yeah. I, I was very I was struggling with it towards the end because it was JC Malay, right? And then I was like, cikgu, yeah. I'm never going to use Malay. I said telling her in English. I said I'm not going to use it again. And then I regretted it over the years because when you go to Malaysia, it's so much nicer to speak to. Or even like when I meet like. Machi or the Pachi at when I'm out, it's just nicer to speak mm, to yeah. them in Malay or yeah. So I did regret it. Mm. I'm sorry if you are <laughs> watching this. I apologize <laughs> for saying that. But you know, I I get what you mean. Yeah, but I I think it's interesting when you guys like say that there are people who don't want to be associated with it. I should yeah because say. I was I didn't like I said earlier I didn't know how to speak it when I went to primary school right. Mm. So I had this one tuition teacher. Her name is Madam Jamuna. Like she oh, wow. saved okay. my life. Okay, okay. So okay. actually, maybe good story. Yeah, yeah. 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 good story. Can name. <laughs> so she she um she like made me love Tamil and she was so patient with me, and it's because of her that I can speak and write today. So I think it's very important to know your language. Mm. It's fine to like. Okay, I try, but I'm not good at it. But mm. I'm not going to hate on it, right? Mm. But it's different to like, nah, I don't need it. Mm. It's lame. I, it's not. It's not cool. I'm like, mm. can't sit with us. Yeah. <laughs> I, have a, I have a personal pet peeve, which What is, is people saying that they're proud that they don't know their mother. Yeah, time. see, I don't oh, like that. Yes. Do okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So and they'll be proud to say like, oh, uh, I don't know, I don't know Chinese, and I, I just don't get like, why is it a thing to be proud of? Yeah, I, mm. I I think it's a pity if you don't really know Chinese because, mm. like, firstly, I think the language itself is very mm. beautiful. Uh, like what you said, like yeah. of demo, I yeah. believe that it's the same thing for all other languages. Yeah, There's yeah, a lot definitely. of proverb, a lot of wisdom, a mm. lot of values in the language itself. I mean, it is a vessel of like cultural identity, mm. and you're just missing out on a huge part of, uh, and you're just missing out on a huge part of your identity if you don't know your mother tongue. Mm. Yeah. I'm surprised, that, like, why people say. Oh. I, yeah, I don't it's, know Chinese yeah, I mean like we have the Malays and the Indians learning Chinese mm. and like so proud oh you know I learned yeah. Mandarin I'm good you know that kind of thing I mean I wish my kids uh, would do Mandarin but as a third language lah, of course mm. not as a second language yeah so I'm surprised that you know even mm. in the Chinese community you know you have people who like oh I don't I don't want to be identified as Chinese and all that mm. yeah 
I mean, um, these kind of people are like less and less nowadays yeah. Yeah. because more people are seeing the value of like mm. learning your mother tongue. Mm. But they just think, I, I think their mentality is like, if I know English and English is enough, then why do I need my mother tongue? Mm. Yeah. But what, what do you guys think about it? No, I, I think you need to, I mean, even if it's not your mother tongue, it's, I mean, just cool lah. You can speak more than one language. Yeah, right? yeah it's a cool factor. So. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, like, right. when I'm amongst my friends from overseas, I'm like yapping in Tamil <laughs> and then they're just like, oh <laughs> my god. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. you're like, it's your superpower. Yeah, it's my superpower. Correct. Yeah. 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 They're like, how do, you, how do you say this? And I say it and they're like, oh. So, yeah. Yeah. represent me. Yeah. And if you have a second language, I mean, like, you know, you go overseas and you want to talk about someone. I mean, skill, they probably skill, know yeah, yeah. Mandarin, mm, yeah. but like who in Europe would probably know Malay, right? Yeah, yeah so why not? Openly. That's it. <laughs> what, what, what are some things that you will say? <laughs> no la, I mean, sometimes you just want to refer to a person, mm. say, you know, oh, interesting thing. But you don't want to, you know, offend them or whatever, yeah. you know. And then, you know, if I'm with my sister or whoever who can speak Malay, it's just fun, right? To be able to do mm. it. And then they don't even know. And then you just like smile and... Yeah. I don't know. It's just like a secret code. Yeah, it's, just, like, it's like you got the in, you know. Yeah, yeah. and I, I don't know. I mean, like, I can not know someone, but like the moment I speak Malay to them, I think mm. like that sort of like bond us together. Yeah, it breaks the I wall think, down yeah, immediately. I think so. Yeah. yeah, even if I go to Malaysia, you know, if I were to order in Malay, and then you can see, oh, okay, you know, they will. Right. Or like when I'm at NTC, then like the auntie's getting is Indian, and I talk to her in Tamil. Yeah. She'll be so happy. And I'm like, hey, we have a bond. Yeah. 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 <laughs> It just connects people. I think mm, languages yeah. connects people. It's not just about your mother tongue language, like okay. all the different languages. Yeah. So do you guys think more can be done? I mean, I feel I feel like y'all are trying with your jobs. Literally, you're <laughs> yeah. like producing content to get people to listen. And then the government's doing all these things like getting people to, getting kids to do higher mother tongue at an earlier age, mm. right? Or uh, from sec one. What do you think, what else do you think can be done? Does it start at home? Is it? Definitely. Oh. <laughs> Seriously, as, as I say, if it's, it's top down, mm. right, and you really take the joy, right? Mm. Oh, what can the government do more? I mean, they already have the, um, like, for us, we have the Bulan Vasa, the Malay language man. Mm. And then, of course, they are so encouraging people to take their mother tongue language and all that and making things like easier. Like, they recently took out the Peribasa part for our secondary Peribasa school. Are the yeah. Best. I know, right? But you know, they are that making changes, trying to adapt, trying to make, you know, life easier for the students. But I think at the end of the day, I think it's at home, lah, right? Like I didn't realize that until I am I have my own kids. Mm. And then, you know, I, I reflected because my kids like so bad, right? Like I can tell them <laughs> like yeah, literally I got quite worried, you know, when my uh my my child, then he was six years old. So I say, Hey, do you know what's kuching? And then he's like Hmm, has he got to do something with P? Because he thought it means kenceng. Oh, like P. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay, okay. then I'm like, uh, no. So, you know, kuching is cat, basically. Oh, That's like okay, so okay. basic, right? Like cat, dog, right? It's something you should know. And then I got so worried. So, I think it starts at home because it is, you know, when uh, you expose them mm. and then you like, sort of like, like my father, right? Give us no choice but to be good at it. Then somehow they will at least uh, get that Get that yeah, in their system, up, yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah, even if it's got to be forced a little. Yeah. 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 I Would totally you, agree with that. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree with that because like, I'm very fortunate that my parents spoke to me Chinese since young. And uh, actually, I have a younger brother who got sent to childcare when he was younger. So he's not as good in Chinese as me. And mm. I, I, really, I, I really think that made a difference. <laughs> yeah. So I think like, having an environment that you grew up in, like speaking mm. your mother tongue, I think that's very important. Yes. Mm. Yeah. But other than, uh, other than parents, I feel like we should make like we should normalize speaking our mother tongue and mm. not make it like a very intimidating thing. We should mm. make it more approachable and accessible. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think just don't make fun of kids who are trying or mm. people who try. Like you know, like even people like my brother, my brother, um, he didn't get Madam Gemina. So oh, okay, too he bad. Missed out. So um, his demo is atrocious. Oh, wow. But he tries. <laughs> so when he speaks with me or like when he tries to yeah. make jokes, I don't make fun of. I mean, I do, <laughs> but I like. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm, I appreciate that he tries, and okay. I think you shouldn't shut them down like, if they're trying. Mm. Mm. It's also yeah. a community effort, like, correct, right? Correct, you correct. shouldn't like shut down. You mm. shouldn't like, haha, yeah, why you're like, you cannot speak? Yeah. So, mm. why is it so bad? Why are you speaking it wrong? You mm. know, I, that was what made me not enjoy Malay lessons exactly. because mm. I got called out about not. Sp I spoke it with an accent because it's not really my mother tongue. Yeah. Yeah. So I was trying, but I, I, I did get called out. So that's where the hurt. 
<laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's okay. It's okay. I'm on my on my Malay we learning Malay. Yes. I'll call you. I'll call you up. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Come to page to learn. <laughs> we we also have yeah. these people sometimes like they go overseas. So mm. people who are like proper Tamil speakers, right? They go to UK, US for a mm. while. They come back and then they're like, oh, you konjum konjum dan Tamil terium. Like, I only speak a little, little. Oh. Then I'm mm. like, we still eat sambal, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. Okay, okay. So me. never forget your roots. Never forget. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm. Thank you guys for this very enjoyable conversation and for sharing your thoughts about learning your mother tongue. Now, before I sign out, let me, I'm going to ask you, what was your experience like learning your mother tongue? Tell me in the comment section of this episode on ST Podcast YouTube channel. Now, like, subscribe and hit the notification bell and you'll get up to date with all the fresh content that we'll be putting out on this channel. Now, if you just want to listen to the podcast version of the show, you can catch it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or the ST app. Now, you can also find me on Instagram. I'm at the usual place underscore net. So connect with me there. I'll see you next time at the usual place. Wait, we forgot one last important thing. Oh. We hope that more support can be given to Malatang content. <laughs> okay, please follow them at uh, yes. Hey Kaki and yeah. you can find them w- and tell them about your podcast as well. Oh yeah, so we have a podcast um, called Inner Day Inner Slay but it's at Tamil Mercer on Instagram and on TikTok so follow us there. Yes, okay, that's where we can get Tamil content and then <laughs> yeah. where do we get uh, hey. Malay content? So Malay, uh, Malay-centric content, OMGX. BH. Yeah, so we are on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. So follow us and I'm sure everyone will um, understand our content regardless of race, language. Mm. Oh. Yeah, and it's okay. religion. Okay. <laughs> Go oh. for it. Oh, follow hey, hey, follow hey Kaki and we bring to you fun and enjoyable Chinese content. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you at the next time on The Usual Place. Mm-hmm.